So now let's talk about poly 1D function. And basically, poly 1D creates polynomial functions in order to evaluate them and etc. So now let's take this example. As you can see, this polynomial function is a polynomial function with a degree 2. So let's define this example. So the first step in order to define a polynomial function is to store its coefficients in a variable. So let's define a variable, let's say called coef, I mean coefficients. And inside a list, I want to define its coefficients. So as you can see, the first coefficient is 3. The second one is 6, and the third one is 12. But you should notice that these coefficients order should be according to the highest order all the way up to the lowest order. So you can see that here in this polynomial function, the highest order is x to the power of 2, and its corresponding a coefficient is 3 and the lowest order is this one which you can see the coefficient is 12. So remember that these coefficients are according to the highest order all the way up to lowest order. So after defining the coefficients I simply type np.poly1d so I want to use the poly1d and remember 1d means one dimension. It means that it has only one variable so here you can see that we have only one variable and that variable is x. So 1D means we have only one variable. That's it. And now we should pass the coefficients. So that's it. And I store the results in a variable, let's say called F1. And now if I print the F1 variable, and if I run a code, you can see here's our polynomial function. You can see 3x to the power of 2 plus 6x plus 12. And if you want to evaluate this polynomial function when x is equal to 0, we can simply pass 0 to this function, this polynomial function. So if I run a code, you can see here is the result. And it means that if you plug in 0 to this polynomial function, you will get 12. And for example, if you plug in 1, and if you run a code, you can see you are going to get 21. And also, if you plug in 2, and if you run the code, you are going to get 36, and etc. So now example number 2, suppose that we want to define this polynomial function. So as you can see in this polynomial function, the order is not according to the highest degree all the way up to the lowest degree. So the first step is to convert all the coefficients from the highest order into the lowest order. So here it is, you can see that we have sorted all the terms from the highest order all the way up to the lowest order. Now we want to define the coefficients. So if you want to pass these coefficients from the highest order all the way up to the lowest order, the first value is 4, the second one is 5, and the third one is 4. And now I simply type np.poly1d, and I should pass uh, the coefficients. So I should pass the coefficients, and I want to store the results in a variable, let's say called f2. And now if I print the f2 variable, and if I run the code, you can see here is our polynomial function with degree 2. You can see 4x to the power of 2 plus 5x plus 4. But now let's take this example, example number 3, so we can see that here is a polynomial with degree 3. So the first step is to sort all the terms from the highest order all the way up to the lowest order. So there it is. You can see that we have sorted all the terms from the highest order all the way up to the lowest order. But the important thing is in this polynomial function, we don't have any x to the power of 2. So because we don't have any x to the power of 2 term, its corresponding coefficient is 0. So now, as you can see, if we want to store the coefficients in a variable, let's say called coef, you can see that the coefficient, the corresponding coefficient for x to the power of 3 is 4. The corresponding coefficient for x to the power of 2 is 0. Then the corresponding coefficient for x to the power of 1 is 5. And the final coefficient is 4. So now we are uh, defining a polynomial function. And we want to store that in a variable, let's say called f3. And here we want to print the f3 variable. So if I run the code, you can see here is the output 4x to the power of 3 plus 5x plus 4. And for example, if I want to plug in 5 to this polynomial function, that's very easy. I can pass 5 and if I run the code, you can see here is the output. Now I really suggest you to watch this video which is on the screen now.